Hello friends and welcome to the show Crime Tap. Today we're diving into the story of J. Paul Getty, the richest man in the world during the 70s. First, let's meet Jean-Paul Getty. He was an oil businessman born in England, but later moved to America. Getty started his own business in America. His company, Getty Oil, became a global success. Getty's oil business spanned across different parts of the world. He was a true titan of industry. In his 70s, Getty's wealth was unmatched. He was the richest man in the world. Despite his wealth, Getty was known for his stinginess. His stories of frugality were as famous as his wealth. So that's the story of J. Paul Getty, a man as famous for his wealth as for his stinginess. John Paul Getty, once the richest man in the world, was notoriously stingy. His frugality was so extreme, it overshadowed his wealth. Getty had many children. Tragically, his one son died of a brain tumor at just 12 years old. This loss shocked Getty, but not as much as you'd expect. During his son's treatment, Getty argued over the hospital bills. Imagine the world's wealthiest man haggling over medical costs during his son's final days. Getty's stinginess didn't stop there. He handed over his oil business in Italy to another son, making him in charge. Getty's wealth was immense, but his stinginess was even more legendary. A tale of riches that serves as a stark reminder that wealth doesn't always equate to generosity. Meet junior John Paul Getty, I, I, a man with a rich history. Born in Italy, he was the grandson of a world-renowned oil businessman. His parents divorced when he was young, leading to a move to England with his father. Yet, he stayed in Italy with his mother, starting his studies there. A life lived in the shadow of wealth, yet uniquely his own. It was three um, near Rome. John Paul Getty, just 16, was walking home from a party. Suddenly, a car pulled up. They asked, are you J. Paul Getty? He confirmed and was swiftly pulled into the car. He was taken to a cave outside Rome. There, he was told he'd been kidnapped. He laughed, claiming he didn't have much money. But the kidnappers knew better. They knew he was the grandson of the world's richest man. For two days, they remained silent. Imagine your child goes missing. Two days later, you get a chilling call. The voice on the other end says, your son is with us. We've kidnapped him. The kidnapper waits and made another call. They demanded $17 million for your son's safe return. You laugh, telling the kidnapper you've never seen $17 million. The kidnapper laughs back, reminding you of your family's wealth. Your son's grandfather is J. Paul Getty, the richest man in the world. The kidnapper knows this. The ransom isn't just a number. It's a cruel reminder of your family's fortune. J. Paul Getty, a man worth $12 billion, faced a terrifying situation when his grandson was kidnapped. The kidnappers demanded a ransom of $17 million, a mere drop in Getty's vast wealth. The boy's mother, divorced and estranged from the Getty family, was left in a desperate situation. She was raising her son in Rome, far from her ex-husband in Britain and her billionaire ex-father-in-law. The kidnappers believed that the grandfather Getty would pay to save his grandson. But the mother knew the reality. Her ties with the Getty family were severed after the divorce. With the threat looming, the mother was left in a state of worry and fear. The question remained, would the world's richest man pay the ransom for his grandson? The world's richest man J. Paul Getty's grandson was kidnapped in Italy. A staggering $17 million ransom was demanded. When asked if he'd pay the ransom, Getty made headlines with his response. I have 14 grandsons. If I pay for one, the others will also be kidnapped, he said. Initially, Getty thought it was a hoax. He suspected his grandson was trying to extract money from him, knowing his reputation for being tight. Fisted. A truly shocking tale of wealth and ransom. J. Paul Getty, the world's richest man, was kidnapped. The Italian mafia demanded a staggering 17 million, but Getty denied and said no, 
As days turned into months, people began to doubt. Was this a real kidnapping or a conspiracy? The newspapers were filled with speculation. Getty's family was in turmoil. His mother pleaded for his release. His grandfather, however, remained unmoved, refusing to pay the ransom. With no deal or negotiation in sight, the world watched and waited. Would the richest man in the world really let his grandson suffer over money? The drum continued to unfold. J. Paul Getty, once the richest man in the world, wasn't just a figure of wealth. He was a man with personal struggles and vulnerabilities. Getty's life took a tragic turn when his son was kidnapped. The mafia kept the boy John in a cave, tortured him, and then sold him to a bigger, more dangerous gang. This event wasn't just a headline. It was a father's worst nightmare. John Getty was now dealing with criminals far more professional and menacing than before. We often perceive the wealthy as distant and unfeeling. But Getty's story reminds us of the human side of wealth, the grief, the internal conflicts, the complex relationships. Wealth doesn't shield from life's tragedies. John Paul Getty, the richest man in the world, was a testament to that. Let's remember him, not just for his wealth, but for his humanity too. J. Paul Gatti, I, I was kidnapped, but his mother couldn't pay the ransom. The kidnappers were professionals, dangerous and persistent. They thought they'd nabbed a rich man's son, but his parents were divorced and broke. By October, the Italian mafia's patience ran thin. They decided to act. In late October, J. Paul Getty was taken hostage. His captors plied him with alcohol, making him lose his senses. Basically, they tortured John Paul Getty Jr. They sat him on a chair, commenting on how much he'd grown in the past few months. One kidnapper donned a mask and began to cut Getty's hair. But hair, cutting wasn't their true intention. Seizing an opportunity, the kidnapper sliced off Getty's right ear in one swift motion. The shock hit and Getty began to scream very painfully. His captors, unfazed, stored the severed ear in a polythane bag. Getty, a kidnapped child, couldn't seek medical help. His captors did what they could to treat him. They wrapped some of Getty's hair around the ear and sent it to a local newspaper named A Mother's Worst Fear Came True. Her son's kidnapped. A ransom note was written and sealed in an envelope. But fate had a cruel twist. A postal strike in Italy delayed the delivery. The envelope sat in the post office for two weeks. When the strike ended, the work resumed. Three weeks after the kidnapping, a local newspaper in Rome received the envelope. Addressed to the editor, it was opened. Inside were a cut ear, hair, and a chilling note. The note revealed the victim, the grandson of the world's richest man, J. Paul Getty. The Getty kidnapping was not a joke. An ear was sent as proof, along with a chilling threat. Pay $17 million within 15 days or receive more body parts. American oil tycoon Paul Getty realized his grandson was truly kidnapped. He dispatched a retired TA agent to Italy. The ex-agent's mission was clear. Find the grandson and secure his release. But the clock was ticking. 15-day deadline loomed ominously. Despite the ex-agent's efforts, the CIA couldn't prevent the deadline from expiring. The kidnapper's threat hung in the air. Pay up or receive the rest of the body, piece by piece. Paul Getty, known for his stinginess, faced a dilemma when his grandson was kidnapped. A whopping $17 million. Under pressure, Getty finally agreed to negotiate. The kidnapper, cunning as he was, settled for $3 million. But Getty, ever the miser, only paid $2 million. Why? His lawyer advised him to save on taxes. His grandfather, the richest man in the world, agreed to pay. But there was a twist. He offered $2 million and loaned the remaining $1 million to his son, J. Paul Getty's father, at a four-ish interest rate. The ransom reached the kidnappers in Rome. On December 15th, 1973, five months after the kidnapping, J. Paul Getty was released on a road outside Rome. Following his release, 
J. Paul Getty went to Rome to reunite with his mother. A story of a family's ordeal, a ransom, and a surprising loan. 16-year-old J. Paul Getty was kidnapped. He suffered from untreated infections and blood loss. In desperation, he wrote a letter to his mother pleading, Please save my life. After five months, he was finally released. This traumatic experience left a lasting impact on him. As J. Paul Getty, I, I, I was kidnapped in 1973. For five torturous months, he was held captive, leading to a severe ear infection. After his release, he left Italy for the US, settling in a Beverly Hills home gifted by his grandfather. But his health deteriorated rapidly. He suffered a stroke, leading to paralysis. His mental health wasn't good. Despite plastic surgery to repair his ear, his health never fully recovered. In 2011, at the age of 54, J. Paul Getty I. 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 passed away. His tragic life, marked by his infamous kidnapping, ended far too soon. So that was the chilling tale of J. Paul Getty's kidnapping. Some people believe the kidnapper didn't cut his ear. If Getty wasn't so miserly, he wouldn't have suffered this trauma. He wouldn't have been held captive for five months, wouldn't have had a stroke, and wouldn't have died at 54. Many blamed his grandfather's stinginess for his ordeal. If he paid the ransom sooner, Getty would have been freed. This is the story of the world's richest man, a tale where money was everything, yet nothing.